Second line treatment for sarcoma can also be just as challenging as front line treatment. We usually recommend that the agent of choice be dictated by the patient's side effect profile from the prior uh, treatment. In other words, did they have edema? Uh, did they experience febrile neutropenic events frequently? Is the patient more fatigued as a result of their prior therapy? Aside from that, we also look at the histology. In other words, if the patient has a lot of myosarcoma, is there a particular therapy that will benefit them more than if I use another type of therapy? While for many years we simply had two general options, doxorubicin-based therapies or gemcitabine-based therapies, as a result of fantastic work done across multiple institutions around the world, we now have several options at our disposal, including the use of pizopanib, trabectidin, or aribulin for use in patients that progress on frontline chemotherapy. In the past, if a patient progressed on doxorubicin-based therapy, we would recommend gemcitabine as the go-to drug. Uh, the opposite was also true. If a clinician treated their patient with gemcitabine-based therapy first, we would generally recommend doxorubicin-based therapy. Now that we have medicines such as pizopanib, trabectidin, ribulin, I think we need to better, better evaluate what their needs may be. Pizopanib is a medication that was FDA approved uh, in second-line treatment for any patient that developed resistance to anthracyclines. While the selectivity uh, was across multiple subtypes, it's important to know that very few patients actually had a substantial response. Its FDA approval was contingent upon its effect on progression-free survival compared to placebo. So I generally consider this type of option in a patient that has a low side effect pro profile who is yearning to uh, step aside from IV-based chemotherapies. On the other hand, if I have a patient with a leiomyosarcoma or a disease such as mixed soy liposarcoma, I think trabectidin is a very appropriate choice. Tra uh, trabectidin is a medication that got FDA approved on the basis of progression-free survival compared to a control arm of decarbazine. Importantly, uh, patients with leiomyosarcoma and mixed soy liposarcoma appear to derive better benefit than other subtypes studied on this particular study. While we do need to take into account the side effect profile, as this is an IV medication, if you have a patient with metastatic sarcoma who has progressed on doxorubicin-based therapy, I think trabectidin should highly be considered. Separate to this, if a patient uh, has a liposarcoma, such as a dedifferentiated liposarcoma, a ribulin was FDA approved on the basis of an overall survival advantage compared to decarbazine. Uh, lastly, I think it's also important that if a patient has progressed on frontline treatment options, uh, there should be a discussion regarding uh, the utility of clinical trials. This oftentimes may be dependent on the center uh, from which you're providing care. Now that many of our community practices are also uh, running clinical trials on a regular basis, I think it's a fair discussion point to have between the local oncologist and uh, the consulting uh, physician along with the patient. Trabectinid is a well-studied medication that has been uh, under investigation uh, for several years uh, because of a pivotal phase three trial comparing the efficacy of trabectidin against a carbazine. We now have an FDA approval for trabectidin for patients specifically with leiomyosarcoma. Uh, patients that have mixed soy liposarcoma or L-type sarcomas are also amenable to treatment with trabectidin. Importantly, the response rate to trabectinin is actually low. It's under 10%. However, it had the ability to improve progression-free survival compared to decarbazine. This is important because while we all want to shrink tumors as much as possible, I want to keep my patients uh, progression-free as long as possible as well. And so sometimes we have to think about uh, what effect this may have on the patient. So if I have a patient with a low symptom burden who has leiomyosarcoma, trabectinin is an excellent choice to consider. It does have certain side effects uh, similar to other cytotoxic chemotherapies, but generally we can manage these well so that way we can maximize the benefit for the patient. When we think about the long-term uh, strategy for our patients, we have to be aware of both their overall health at the initiation of treatment and, what, and how their therapies may impact their health over time. We need to think about their organ function, their performance status, and what effects the medicines themselves may have. 
Uh, when we have patients that have cardiac abnormalities, it's clear that we should consider medications that will lessen the impact to their heart, while patients with uh, no problems from a cardiac standpoint should be considered for therapies such as doxorubicin-based therapies. Importantly, if we are thinking about medicines such as trabectinin, it is important that the patient have echocardiograms before treatment because oftentimes cardiotoxicity has been seen with medicines such as trabectinin. But in general, when we sequence therapies, we need to make it uh, based on an individual basis. And there needs to be clear communication between the local oncologist and the treating oncologist, as well as with the patient, so that way we're meeting the expectation uh, of our patients.